Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. This is the Cliff Notes for lecture number seven, the environmental determinants of criminal behavior. Uh, again, this was one in three things where I was talking about biology first, um, psychological aspects sec second, and then, you know, back to sociology. So in this lecture, there are four major theories presented here. Um, differential association, Edwin Sutherland, you should have read the article for this. Um, <laughs> differential association is probably the easiest theory to understand, uh, just that crime is learned. And for all of these theories, very different from biological determinism, uh, or even sociobiology, which says that your, your body has an impact on your behavior. Uh, for this, this is all four of these assume that there's no difference between criminals and non-criminals except for the choices that we make. And of course, how we learn to become criminal. Uh, second theory, neutralization, basically just boils down to what our society feeds us, uh, the excuses that society gives us, the subterranean values that exist within our society that allow us to engage in, in deviant and criminal behavior. Uh, Merton's uh, strain theory, and um, that's a really important sociological piece, a really good way to understand um, criminology and crime, generally speaking, uh, because again, it focuses on the mainstream societies in American society, uh, which you know tends to focus on wealth as a means to success and how in American culture, part of our consumer culture, is to give off the impression that we have money, is to give off the impression that we have wealth and to have nice things and to have wealthy things. So there are those that can buy these things outright there are those that go into credit card debt in order to obtain these things. And uh, then there's those of us that steal these things or scheme to get our hands on these things. Uh, we all want the same stuff. We all are aiming for the same values. It's just that some people have go through strain in order to get them. Uh, last but not least was labeling theory. Labeling theory, another very easy one to understand that if you are called something over and over again, uh, eventually the idea is that it will be a self-fulfilled prophecy. Eventually we start believing in that label. Uh, so pretty, pretty simply put, if you tell a child, like you're just like your father, you're acting just like your father, uh, you're such a bad kid, you're going to end up just like your father. Guess what's going to happen to that child? <laughs> that child is going to end up exactly like his father, whatever that behavior is. Because when you're told something over and over again, you begin to believe it. And so I used uh, Willie Bosket Jr. as the example of labeling theory. Really, Willie Bosket Jr. is an example for biological, psychological, so many different causes. But the idea is that he was labeled as a bad kid starting around the age seven, eight, nine. So he started to believe it. You know, he's, he's the baddest of them all, if you will. Uh, and so um, please follow up on that. Look at the discussion about neutralization theory. Uh, again, please read the reading that is on Moodle right now, and uh, otherwise I'll see you guys next week. Take care.